Hey guys, it's Shira from Witch Up Diaries, and today I want to show you how I built this tall armoire slash wardrobe slash storage cabinet. And if you've been following along, this is actually the fifth and final piece that I've been building for the matching furniture series for my dad's office. So if you're ready to get building, this is going to be a good one. Let's go. If you've seen some of my latest videos, you may have seen that I've been building my dad some matching pieces for his office. I didn't really know how many pieces would be in this collection, but I do think that this is probably the series finale and the last piece that I'll be building for this matching set. It's a little bittersweet since this series was so much fun to build, but I think that I'm wrapping things up with my favorite piece, so let's jump right in. If you're interested in the building plans for this, I will link them below along with the building plans for all of the other matching pieces in the set. To get started, I began making the corner post for the cabinet. If you've seen any of the other project videos in this series, you'll know that I made the legs from gluing together 2x4s. I ran these through the planer to smooth out the surfaces so they'd glue together a little easier and then I trimmed them down to length on the miter saw and began gluing up 4 sets of 2x4s about 6 foot long. Normally, these glue ups are fairly boring, but this time I had some visitors to make things interesting. What in the world? There's spiders everywhere. These are like creepy dudes. Hmm. Things are about to get graphic, so I'm gonna turn this off. After I took care of the unwanted visitors, I moved on to gluing up the rest of the legs and set them aside to start cutting the plywood while they dried. I pulled out a 3 quarter inch sheet of birch plywood and cut down some strips to use for the sides. I've got the cut diagram in the plans linked below. I cut the remaining piece of the sheet to length to make the doors from later, which is kind of funny because my plans changed for the doors and I had to recut these, but we will get there in a minute. I brought the pieces that will be the sides to the miter saw and trimmed them to length along with the 2x2 two two pieces that I'll use for the frame of the cabinet. By this time the glue had dried on the corner post so I removed the clamps, checking for more spiders in the process, and ran them through the table saw to clean up the edges and cut them into square 3x3 three three posts. I trimmed them to their final length on the miter saw and then added a 60 degree taper. Just like with all of the other pieces in this series, I just taper the ends of the leg 60 degrees on two sides. And this taper is totally optional, but it's just a quick way to add a little visual interest to an otherwise pretty plain leg. Once all the legs, plywood, and 2x2 two two pieces were cut, sanded, and ready for assembly, I began assembling the main cabinet frame using pocket holes, screws, and wood glue. Now, if you don't like pocket holes, you can definitely assemble with whatever type of joinery that you prefer. There's always more than one way to build the same thing. Now, I know you all enjoy seeing me make mistakes, so here's one for your viewing pleasure. I forgot to accommodate the two by twos. Okay, so is it better to get rid of the two by twos and add trim on the outside, or is it better to trim these down and redrill the pocket holes? I don't like either option. When I cut these plywood sides, I forgot to take off three inches for the two by twos at the top and the bottom of the panel. So I needed to either trim them down or remove the two by twos and just add one by twos on the outside for the same look. Since I didn't have any one by material in my shop to add this outside trim, I decided to just trim the plywood three inches and I didn't even bother redrilling the pocket holes that I cut off. They weren't really necessary anyway and that's just two less holes that I have to cover up later. While you watch the assembly process, I would like to take a minute to introduce you to our video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators on topics like illustration, design, photography, video, and more. 
It's curated specifically for learning, so there are no distracting ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so they never run out of learning opportunities. As a content creator, I'm personally really interested in learning more about design, photography, and video editing. I started taking advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, taught by Jordi Vandeput. I'm working my way through the class on my own time, and already it has taught me more efficient ways to organize and edit my video footage that I wasn't even aware of before. If you're interested in seeing what Skillshare has to offer, the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. Now, let's get back to the build. Once the cabinet was assembled, I realized that I overlooked a detail that caused me to change my plans a little. The cabinet's only 17 inches deep, and I was planning on using 16 inch drawer slides because that's what I already have in my tool chest. But the drawer front is an inch and a half thick, and the drawer slide is 16 inches, so I need at least 17 and a half inches, and I only have 17. So I need to go one size smaller on my drawer slide and get a 14. So I got on Amazon to order the door slide, and while I was on there, I realized I need to get some hinges for the doors. So as I'm browsing the hinges, it occurs to me that, remember my computer desk that matches this style that I built for my dad's office? Well, remember how I had to use pivot hinges because the door thickness plus the cove molding, there was like no concealed hinge option that was gonna work? Well, I remembered that I'm gonna have to get pivot hinges for those doors, and it also occurred to me that my original plan, that wasn't gonna work because then I would have nowhere to mount my pivot hinges on. If you haven't already seen my matching computer desk video, you can find some background info on the doors at around the eight minute and 25 second mark. I will link it in the description below. But basically, since I was making these doors as three quarter inch plywood with cove molding glued around the edges, the door was too thick to use a typical concealed hinge with. So I needed to use pivot hinges. In order to install these pivot hinges, the original design in my head wouldn't work, and I needed a piece to install between the drawer on the bottom and the doors at the top in order to mount the pivot hinge to. So I cut down a piece of 2x2 and used the spacer block to install it 8 inches from the bottom 2x2. I'll have to drill a hole into this piece later for the hinge, but for now, I went ahead and cut and attached a piece of plywood flush to the top of this 2x2 as the bottom panel. Now with this piece installed, I can go back and properly size and cut my door panels and drawer front. If you watch the computer desk video, you'll also notice that I had to size these doors slightly smaller in order to use these pivot hinges. I will document the door sizing that I used here in the plans linked in the description, but I'm just really glad that I remembered to undersize them this time before I made them. From the remaining plywood sheet, I cut the two doors, a drawer front, and a top and applied iron-on edge banding to cover all of the edges so they looked a little cleaner. Then, just like with the matching bills, I glued cove molding around the front edges of the doors and drawer fronts. Now, in my last build, I used some DAP Rapid Fuse to hold these pieces tight while the glue fully cured. But with these large doors, I wanted a little extra working time to adjust the pieces as needed, so I used painter's tape to hold them in place. While I was working on the cove on the doors, I also cut to fit cove molding to line the sides of the cabinet as well. The lumber yard gave me some really twisted pieces this time, so I had to clamp them while they dried. I also decided to go ahead and plug the pocket holes on the inside of the cabinet. Now, I'm well aware that pocket holes are a hot topic. Use them, don't use them, fill them, don't fill them, it doesn't matter to me. But I used a little wood glue and some pre-cut plugs to fill and sand these down so they're almost invisible on the inside of this cabinet and I think it was well worth the few minutes that it took. For the back panel, I used a router with a rabbiting bit set to the thickness of the quarter inch plywood that I was adding. I routed out rabbits in the back of this cabinet for the plywood to fit into. I used a chisel to sharpen the corners and staple the plywood in place. If you didn't have a router or didn't want to bother with routing this section, you can definitely just staple this panel directly onto the backside. After this back panel was in place, I drilled shelf pin holes along the sides of the cabinet to install adjustable shelves later. I used a scrap block clamped to the front edge to help me line up my shelf pin holes a few inches from the front edge just to make sure that they wouldn't interfere with the doors once they're installed later. Then I centered and secured the 3 quarter inch plywood top panel with 2 inch wood screws through the top frame. I 
I had ordered the drawer slides and the hinges online and while I was waiting for them to be delivered, I went ahead and cut down the pieces to make the drawer box and the shelves so everything would be ready to finish up as soon as they got here. I cut dados in the drawer box sides and applied edge banding to these pieces and the front edges of the shelves. Then I assembled the drawer box and installed a quarter inch plywood panel for the bottom before attaching the last piece. If you're interested, I have a complete drawer building guide that I will link in the description below that will show you exactly how I size, build, and install my drawer boxes. Once my 14 inch drawer slide and pivot hinges came in the mail, I installed the slides onto the bottom section of the cabinet and then began working on the doors. If you aren't familiar with pivot hinges, basically you just drill out and install a bushing in your cabinet frame. The hinge part that mounts to the top and bottom of the doors has a little rod on it that goes inside this bushing and allows it to pivot inside that bushing. I pre-drilled my holes for the bushing to help prevent cracking in the wood since these holes are fairly close to the edge. You can find details on the hinges and the spacing in the plans for this project linked below. I encourage you to check out the matching computer desk video for more details on installing them on this specific type of door, but once I drilled out and installed the bushings, I just attached the top hinge to the door, placed it in the cabinet, and then screwed the bottom hinge onto the door from the inside. And the last piece was just installing the drawer box onto the slides and the drawer front onto the drawer box. The last thing this project needed was some clear coat. I just applied some Minwax Helmsman like I did for all the previous matching pieces and then I added the handles and installed the shelves using shelf pins. I also decided to add a little magnetic catch to hold the doors in place since these pivot hinges don't really have like a catch or a stop on them. And that wrapped up this project and this series on my dad's matching office furniture. Now a lot of people have asked to see it all together in his office and I'll post a picture once we get this moved in and the office cleaned up a little bit. It's definitely not magazine worthy or anything, but I'll share it anyway since so many of you have asked, so be sure to follow along if you aren't already subscribed so that you don't miss out on that post. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and this entire series as much as I have. Don't forget to check out the build plans below if you want to build one for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy building.